Following the removal of the Golden Harpy from the top of the Great Pyramid and the subsequent murder of White Rat, Daenerys is furious. She orders that he be buried with full honors in the Temple of the Graces as a statement to the Sons of the Harpy, and orders that the Unsullied patrol the streets of Marine. She later receives his Darzo Lorax report on the situation in Yunkai. Daenerys is pleased that the wise masters will share their rule with the former slaves but refuses to support Hizdar's concession of allowing the fighting pits to reopen. Later that night, Dario tries to convince her to reconsider, explaining that he was once a slave who earned his freedom in the pits. The skills he learned ultimately led him to the second sons and thence to Daenerys. Upon learning that Drogon hasn't been seen in weeks, Dario muses on the possibilities of a dragon queen with no dragons. In response, Daenerys visits Rey Gal and Viserion in the catacombs where she imprisoned them. To her horror, they try to attack upon hearing her voice and she is forced to flee. Daenerys leads a council meeting in the pyramid debating the fate of a son of the harpy that Dario and Grey Worm found. Barristan pleads that the man deserves a fair trial while the freed Miranese slave, Mossada, insists Daenerys put the man to death. Daenerys thanks her advisors for their counsel and dismisses them but Barristan asks her for a word in private about her father, the Mad King. Daenerys initially scoffs at Barristan for reminding her of what she considers her enemy's lies. However, Barristan also reminds Daenerys of his past service in her father's Kingsguard and insists that her enemies did not lie. He tells Daenerys about how her father set entire towns and castles ablaze, murdered sons in front of their fathers, and burned men alive with wildfire, laughing as they screamed. All of this led to a rebellion that killed every Targaryen save for her and Viserys. Daenerys is visibly shocked but assures Barristan that she is not like her father. Barristan agrees, but he still warns her that the Mad King gave his enemies the justice he thought they deserved, and each time it made him feel powerful and right until the very end. Daenerys promises not to have the son of the Harpy executed without a fair trial. Later, Mossada goes against Daenerys's order and executes the man, angering Daenerys. She decides to sentence Mossada to death, stating that killing the son of the harpy broke the law. A crowd gathers to witness Mossada's execution and Daenerys tells the crowd that when she conquered Marine, she promised freedom and justice, but one cannot exist without the other. Daenerys is escorted away by the Unsullied when riots break out between the freedmen and the masters. Daenerys retreats to her pyramid where she wants to spend time alone. She steps out onto her balcony and finds Drogon atop the Great Pyramid. Daenerys is happy to see him and tries reaching out for him, which she hadn't done since the start of her reign over Marine, but he flies away. Daenerys is left heartbroken as she gazes at Drogon from the distance. Daenerys looks down at the streets below from her royal apartment in the Great Pyramid. Sir Barristan arrives and shares a story of how he and Rhaegar used to leave the Red Keep and mingle with the common people on the streets. Daenerys then learns the truth that Rhaegar never loved killing as Viserys once told her before, but that he loved singing and was great at it. Barristan soon tells her that one time he and Rhaegar spent the money Rhaegar earned at a minstrel to get horribly drunk and Daenerys laughs. Dario arrives telling her that his Dar is in the throne room awaiting her. Daenerys asks Barristan if he'll be joining them, but Dario assures her that he has her well protected, despite claiming she could easily defend herself against Hisdar. Daenerys then gives Barristan the day off, cheerfully telling him to make some music in the city below. In the throne room, Daenerys hears Hisdar plead again to reopen the fighting pits of Marine, but she refuses. Hisdar rationally argues that the fighting pits provide a great spectacle that has always been enjoyed by both the masters and slaves and is one of the few things that can bring the city together. Daenerys does not interrupt him this time as he continues to offer his proposal. Daenerys is devastated upon learning of Sir Barristan's untimely death at the hands of the Sons of the Harpy, having lost another one of her most trusted advisers, and grieves over his corpse in the throne room. Upon the suggestion of Dario, Daenerys decides to round up each of the leaders of Marine's noble families, including his Darzo Lorak. Bringing the eight of them down to the catacombs where Viserion and Rhaegal reside, Daenerys, with the enforcement of the Unsullied, forces the leaders forwards towards the dragons until one of them is burned alive and then brutally torn apart. Drawn into Daenerys's debate between mercy and revenge, Missandei advises her queen to trust the decision that she alone sees. Taking this advice, Daenerys approaches Hisdar in his cell, admitting her mistake of refusing to open the fighting pits. Daenerys, 
in order to secure her bondage with the noble people of Marine, decides to wed herself to Hizda, although she makes it clear that she will be the one in control. Later, while in bed with Dario, Daenerys reassures him that her marriage to Hizda is purely political in order to maintain peace. Dario hints at jealousy and asks if Daenerys would marry him instead, but Daenerys, who would like nothing less, is forced to refuse him. To everyone's surprise, Daenerys and Hizda appear in one of the fighting pits to watch the opening of the games, though Daenerys is visibly uncomfortable at the violent butchery before her, and gets up to leave, she is convinced to stay by Hizda. While arguing with him, another fighter emerges into the pit and proceeded to overpower the other participants, knocking them down one by one using non-lethal means that caused Daenerys to become intrigued by this newcomer. When the fighting is over, the surviving fighter reveals himself as Jorah, but Daenerys, who still hasn't forgiven him, orders him taken away. However, Jorah shouts out that he has brought Daenerys a gift. Jorah's companion enters the arena and introduces himself to Daenerys as Tyrion Lannister. Daenerys has both Tyrion and Jorah brought before her inside the Great Pyramid. Though she had doubts about the Lannisters' claimed identity, she lets him try and talk her out of executing Jorah. On Tyrion's advice, she spares Jorah's life and banishes him from Marine again. He counseled that she should not kill those devoted to her, but also that Jorah could not be present should she ever claim Westeros. Later, over wine, Daenerys and Tyrion speak about their families and past. Daenerys is still thinking about executing Tyrion, mostly as revenge against the Lannisters for betraying her family, but decides not to when she sees Tyrion's indifference to death. Tyrion warns her that the noble families of Westeros are too busy fighting the Game of Thrones or exhausted to help her reclaim the Iron Throne, and suggests that she consolidate her power in Marine and build a new kingdom for herself. Daenerys says she'll only stay in Marine long enough to stabilize the situation and likens Westeros's Game of Thrones to a spinning wheel, with the great houses as spokes. Tyrion dismisses her idealism, noting that others have tried to stop the wheel, but Daenerys firmly declares that she intends to break the wheel not just stop it. She then informs Tyrion that she will take him on as an advisor, but confiscates his wine, she needs him to communicate in complete sentences. Attended by Tyrion Lannister, Missandei, Hizdar Zolorak, and Dario Naharis. Daenerys sits in the royal box at the Dizonax pit and watches to crowd, they are silent. Hizdar tells her to clap her hands, which she does, beginning the great games. She then notices Jorah in the array of fighters, who gives the traditional dedication to her and manages to be the last fighter standing. At this moment, Jorah suddenly hurls a spear at the royal box, embedding itself in a son of the harpy sneaking behind Dario. Suddenly, sons of the harpy reveal themselves on every level of the arena and begin slaughtering collaborating masters and freedmen alike, his Dar included. Jorah and Dario evacuate Daenerys from the royal box, while Tyrion rescues Masande. Finding the exits blocked, the group makes a stand in the center of the pit with the remainder of the unsullied defenders. Seeing they are hopelessly outnumbered, Daenerys takes Missandei's hand and closes her eyes, ready to face her death. At that moment, a draconic screech pierces the air, and Drogon descends upon the arena, flying out of a giant flame burst. Many of the suns scatter in terror as Drogon bites and mercilessly burns the nearest ones to death. The suns rally enough to attack Drogon with spears, which Daenerys hastily makes an effort to remove. Trying to get Drogon out of the sun's range, Daenerys climbs atop his back and bids him to fly, becoming the first Targaryen dragon rider in over a century. The sons of the Harpy temporarily rooted, Dario, Jorah, Missandei and Tyrion look on in astonishment as Drogon, with Daenerys on his back, soars away. Later, Daenerys finds herself far away from Marine, atop an impressive hill in a sea of green grass. Drogon is still recovering from his wounds and is uninterested in flying back. Unfortunately, he's also not interested in finding them any food. Daenerys wanders away to find something for them but is shocked to see a trio of Dothraki bloodriders emerge. Within minutes, an entire Kalasa has her surrounded. Understanding what might happen to her, she quickly removes a ring and drops it in the grass, determined to leave a trail. 